I always wonder when some of these movies are in the writing room, do people think they are smarter than they really are? Because sometimes I do. Chase Lee Hockey here with the Blue Futon reviewing Scream 6 in 3D, the fan event. So what was the fan event? I think you get a poster, which I didn't even see a poster anywhere, so I didn't grab a poster. It is what it is. Anyway, what's this movie about? I think this is the one year after Scream 5. They moved to New York, and all of a sudden, people are dying around them. And you know what? People do die. Non-freaking-stop. Who will survive? Who will die? Will it be twist on twist? Will it be so freaking ridiculous that you're like, no way, how'd this happen? We are about to find out. So first, let's talk about the 3D before I go into this story. Because the 3D really has nothing to do with the movie, and it's atrocious. Horrible. There is absolutely no need. At least some movies where you're like, oh, I see death perception of why that would be 3D. Or like My Bloody Valentine 3D would be a great example of a horror movie in 3D. Where they purposely put stuff in the camera to be like, ah, there's a drill coming at me. Or something like that. Or a knife. Here, there's zero, zero reason to put this in 3D. I don't know if they're on the coattails of Avatar or the Marvel movies. But they said, you know what, let's put Scream 6 in 3D, but even have no elements of the movie to benefit from 3D. So if you see it, Scream 6 in 3D or Scream 6 normally, go with the normal route and save yourself that 3 to $5 surcharge. So you are welcome. So I like this film. I thought it was an okay film. I liked the movie until the reveal. And the reveal, I was just like, eh. I, I guess that works. It's kind of cheesy and it still doesn't make sense because when you really think about how someone was, you know, how this whole thing is about who dies and who doesn't die, who comes back to life. If you really think of what happened, it is the whole, is is how many people are behind this conspiracy? Does it, when you think about that, it makes no fucking sense. Fucking New York style. Anyway, let's start with the positive. I think the acting by Jenna Otega, Courtney Cox, the main character, I don't know her name, and that's very, very much my fault. And all the side characters, even though some of them like the cute guy, I think that's what his name in the movie is, cute guy across the hall, they kind of underutilize him, but he still plays his part how he's supposed to. And I think when they do it, it's pretty good. They're doing the lore of the whole, you call it the Bat Cave of Scream, I think it's a pretty interesting thing about how it is portrayed. And everything like that. Even though there is a huge, huge flaw in that scene where someone spouts dialogue. And right when that person spouts dialogue, you're like, I know that's the killer. I know 100% that's the killer. And that was 100% true. So if you're a person, even an 8 or 11 year old, you'll figure out where the story goes. But I do think the lore of what they're doing was interesting and unique. Even though some stuff really doesn't make a lot of sense, you got to suspend a lot of it of disbelief. Especially with the train sequence, which makes me think, fuck New York and fuck the subway system. Never going to that system anyway. And just what occurs in the movie where you're like, okay, I see how that's going. But, okay, it's somewhat believable. But then other stuff, you're like, nah, that shit ain't believable whatsoever. But when the kills do come, they are gory. And people are saying, oh, it's super, super fucking gory. They were gory. They were mid-gory. I personally thought Cocaine Bear was a shit ton more gorier than Scream 6. So that might tell you something. But people are like, oh yeah. So, But when kills were on screen, it was pretty good. So I will say the good thing is I think some of the story elements, the lore, the acting, and some of the kills are unique and fun to watch. However, when going to the negative, the unbelievable and the stupidness of the stuff. How I already said before. Some of the dialogue, truly, if you pay attention to the dialogue at the hour mark, you will know for a fact it is 100% this guy. You know it's not this guy because he's basically a side care of a side character, and there's no way that's going to connect. But listen to the dialogue in the movie theater for the first time, and once you figure out the dialogue and who these characters are, it should snap at a snap of a finger. And then some of these people that get stabbed like 1,700 times, you're just like, how the fuck are you still alive? I understand they probably wanted to do this because it's like, oh, it's a twist of a twist. But nah, fam, if two people are stabbing you 
And some reason you're still alive. He's still alive. No, bitch. You ain't still fucking alive. And then there's one scene where one of the main characters literally gets stabbed, shows it. And then 10 minutes later, they're, they're talking like nothing else happened. And I said something, and the eight year old girl was like, I know, right? I know. I swear to God, this girl was eight years old because I asked. And her 11 year old brother, I said, How old are you guys? I don't care if they're already moving to their parents, but they were saying stuff in the movie where it's like, just kill them. Or come on. Because there's literally a scene in a movie where a guy has a gun and another guy, I'm saying guys because it's a guy or a girl. Oh, I'm tricking you guys. Two guys have a gun. One of them are out of bullets. One of them has bullets. And instead of shooting the person, they run at each other. What? And then one of the per one of the people is a cop. Do you not know how to like your bullet count and how to handle a gun? Because this happens multiple times in the movie where a person has a gun, runs at a person, and there's still bullets in the fucking gun and in the chamber. What are you doing? And then oh, just stupid shit like that where you're just like you, you can't ignore it. You literally can't ignore it. And plus, there's one it, you just you just can't fucking ignore. It. And they put these purposeful like suspense music against another person of like oh that person's the person but then you're right there's no fucking way that's the person because you purposely try to put the audience one way where it completely isn't going that direction at all so even though i like the lore i just think the character scenarios the character decisions are still stupid as shit you know like i don't know maybe i'm just upset about how some of the characters are, are are supposed to be dead. They're literally supposed to be fucking dead with what they went through. And especially, people need to watch Zombieland. What is one of the first rules? Double tap. I'm sick and tired of like, I'm stabbing you in the pinky toe. Run away! Run away! Or like, I'm going to slam you on the head with a camcorder, a big one. I'm just going to tap it on you, and then we're going to run away. We're going to... No! Double tap a motherfucker. Throw it on the head. And they finally do it at the end. And it's like, oh, I'm going to shoot you in the head. Well, finally, you could have done that 45 fucking minutes ago. Overall, Scream 6, it's fine. I had a good time until the ending. Because the ending is where all the faults come in. Where you're like, you're doing that stupid. You're doing that stupid. And I could, you know, give a little like, okay, I understand what you're doing with the dialogue. Because same thing with Glass Onion. You pay attention to the dialogue. You really know who these people are. And the same thing with Scream 6. I thought it was cheaply written. But what they're trying to do with some of the story elements worked. But overall, Scream 6, it, to me, it's another mid-Scream movie. I like 1, 2, 3, 4. I truly like those ones with Hayden Patterson. Uh, and the first three, I think they, you know, the third one's okay, kind of like a little meta. But the first two are fantastic. The fourth one, I think, is better than the third. And I think I'll go 3, 5. Actually, now it would be six, then five. But I, 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 I'm I, starting to think I just see way too many fucking movies. Overall, see it if you want to see a decent horror slasher movie. So Scream 6 will receive a two and a half out of five of Pluton. It was at 50%. I know I'm probably on the lower total point with this one. We'll see the creation who scores gave this one. So you have creation a 79% of the 136 of them. Audience score at 90 fucking seven. With fewer than 50, here's a quick consensus. Certain aspects of horror's most murderous meta franchise may be going stale, but a change of setting and some inventive set pieces help Scream 6 reasonably sharp. Yeah, I know Nev Campbell isn't part of this, as well as Courtney Cox is barely in it, which I under I liked her role in the movie. She was probably the smartest person personally. Except, you know, one scene where you're like, I understand. Just get a gun. If someone's murdering you or trying to murder you in your life, get a fucking gun. 97, but that's not going to say 97 in my opinion. 79 or my 50. Like I said, it's close to the 50 or 60 range. It's really more on the 60 range. Like, ah! I'd say I'm really at a 55%, so it could go either way. It matters when I wake up, when I fall asleep, when I think about it. So 50, 79, 97. Chase talk with the Blue Food Talk. Like, comment, subscribe. One more thing, Blue Food Talk. Blue Food Talk. Have a great. Had a burp and yawn. The same time! Oh, I hate that feeling. It's like, Oh, don't be a loser. Jeez.